At Healthcare Partners Medical Group, our mission is to provide the highest quality of healthcare to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. This portion of the news is brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Affiliated Physical Therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Welcome back to News 46. Healthcare Partners cardiologist Dr. Tally Eric talks about the dangers of fast food and processed food. Because if you read what the scientists in the food processing industry have to say, they will tell you that the food is prepared, the processed food is prepared with a combination of sugar and salt to balance the different tastes. What you end up is with food products that have a lot of both in them. So what would you recommend a person to do? Well, it, it's just really clear. Processed food is harmful to health. That's clear. Fast food being the exemplary uh, uh, type of processed food. Um, but food that is, is uh, I'm, not to, I'm not suggesting people be vegans. That's not what they did in the Spanish study. In fact, by the end of the study, most of the people who started on the Mediterranean diet said that their intention was to continue this diet because they preferred it. Yes. You think that you might need all these extra flavors, but you actually change your taste and start, in, or start enjoying that more. Well, again, the food chemists will tell us, and they, they know this to the great advantage of the companies that employ them, that our taste buds become acculturated mm -hmm. to certain flavors, spices, and salt content. So a person should probably look into these types of diet, including the Mediterranean diet, uh, which, which would um, definitely cut down on those red meats, which you think is important to heart health. It clearly is. I mean, I mean, we love the taste that we get from a good cut of red meat because of the fat content, mm -hmm. but it's clear that shifting our diet in different directions promotes overall better health. Now here's your news across Nevada with Deanna O'Donnell. An initiative to impose a 2% business tax had its first hearing before Nevada lawmakers. The Assembly and State Taxation Committees held a joint hearing on Tuesday on the education initiative backed by the State Teachers Union and other support groups. Supporters claim it would raise $800 million a year for K-12 through grade education. They collected more than double the number of signatures needed to keep the initiative alive. If lawmakers don't pass it by March 15th, it will automatically go to voters on the November of 2014 ballot. Passes by the legislature is unlikely. The tax would be assessed against businesses making more than $1 million a year. Critics argue that the initiative doesn't guarantee more money for education. Nevada officials say they no longer are recognizing concealed weapon permits from Arizona after the state relaxed some of its training requirements. The decision takes effect this week after a unanimous vote last Thursday from the Nevada Sheriff's and Chiefs Association. Association officials say Las Vegas firearm instructors first notified them about the changes in the training requirements. Nevada Department of Public Safety officials say they contacted the Arizona Department of Public Safety and confirmed changes were made in the 2010-2011. Those include adjustments to the minimum training requirements and the elimination of statutory marksmanship and judgmental shooting requirements. Association officials say the requirements are now too different from Nevada's for the state to recognize the permits. Nevada would revert to a presidential primary instead of a caucus system under the bill introduced in the state Senate. The main goal of SB 212 is to allow military personnel serving overseas an opportunity to participate in the presidential nominating process. Under the bill, the primary election would be held in late January every four years when the presidency is at stake. Nominating elections for state and local races would be held at the same time. That would push candidate filing season for legislative and other state races from March to the preceding October. The provision in the bill would authorize moving the primary to early January if necessary to ensure Nevada is the first in the West to cast a presidential preference. Lawmakers are considering a measure to include transgender persons in the list of protected identities in Nevada's hate crime statute. The measure, SB 139, went to the Senate Judiciary Committee on Monday. The crowd spilled into the overflow room and down the hall and featured no opponents to the bill. The bill adds gender identity or expression to the list of race, color, religion, national origin, 
physical or mental disability, and sexual orientation. If jurors find a crime was motivated by one of these qualifiers, the offender faces an additional charge carrying the possibility of 20 years in prison. The severity of penalties for attacks on transgender persons, they hope, will curb some of the often most gruesome violence against people of that identity. Is another foreclosure tsunami about to sweep through southern Nevada? It looks like the region might be in for round two. But this time, there may be some opportunities. Real estate ep experts say there are recent signs that buyers and sellers need to be aware of. Notices of defaults have tripled in the first two months of the year compared with last year, while 2012 was a slow year for foreclosures because of the state law requiring banks to prove they had the right to foreclose. The increase could alter market dynamics. More defaults and foreclosures could help with the shortage of inventory, but the increase in the rate of defaults combined with the possible end to the Mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act at the end of the year has local professionals saying 2013 is the year to act. While short sales and foreclosure sales have dominated the market in recent years, the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors reports more homes are being sold now through traditional sales. These sales accounted for more than half of all local home sales in January. I'm Deanne O'Donnell. That's your news across Nevada. What's happening in business news? Here's Bill Muller to give you all the latest with your first business brief. I'm Bill Muller. This is the first business brief for Thursday, March 7th. BP, it's facing a new civil trial. It's accused of misleading shareholders after the 2010 oil spill. There's another civil trial going on this week where a retired rig supervisor has testified he was not under pressure to ignore safety measures. Office supplier Staples had just reported fourth quarter earnings fell 72 percent. It was due to restructuring and store closings. Core earnings were stronger, but you know, office supply, that's a tough sector. A lot more offices are becoming more digitized. American businesses have again begun to invest in things like equipment, software, staff, or building new stores. Numbers from the Commerce Department show equipment and software orders rose 7.2 percent from December to January, almost 10 percent higher since November. It's due to rising earnings, more available credit, and growing consumer demand. I'm Bill Mahler, and that's the first business brief. We'll be right back with weather with Ian B. Clark right after these messages. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump. Local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Welcome back, everyone. Today is kind of gloomy outside. We have mostly cloudy skies. Winds coming out of south-southwest at 11, gusts at 21, kind of calming down from yesterday. High is 64 degrees. Pressure falling from 29.89. UV index at 5. 28% for your humidity, 606 a.m. sunrise, and the record high, 84 degrees in 1972. So looking on to tonight, 60% chance of some late rain showers. 40 degrees for your low, so we won't see any snow. Winds coming out of south-southwest at 6, gusts at 12. Humidity 56%, sunset 5.45 p.m. and the record low 27 degrees in 1940. So looking on to Friday, those showers, looks like they'll carry on. 60% chance of some showers there on tomorrow. High of 56, low 38. So tomorrow's going to be that last day of 40 of a rebound in temperature. Winds coming out of the southwest at 7, gusts at 11. Humidity 51% during the day, so that's pretty high. Sunrise 6.04 a.m. and UV index coming down to 4. So looking on afterwards, temperature picking up. 62 there on Saturday, 66 on Sunday, partly cloudy on Saturday and sunny on Sunday. And then as we head into next week, it looks like we'll hit 70 degrees by Monday. The average for this time of year is about 68 for the high and 48 for the low. So we're probably not going to see that until about next week. A casting call is being held at Golden Rainbow for the 27th Annual Ribbon of Life Fundraising Spectacular, now through Friday, April 5th. For more information, email smharDIN at me.com. 
Attention veterans and their families. The Veterans Food Bank is having a special food distribution Friday, March 8th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. The VFW is located at 4651 Homestead Road. Please bring the following a photo ID, VA card, proof of residency. An example of that is any mail, a social security number for each of your family members. So really quick before we leave, I just wanted to mention, um, I don't know if you've actually tried them, but Kiyoki's Wings and Things are a new business, new restaurant that just opened over uh, across the street from First Move Fitness. And yesterday we went, you know, I went there um, with another coworker and delicious, huh? absolutely delicious. Let me just tell you this. Oh my gosh. Now the fries, he said that he got a lot of complaints on that, but they're my favorite they're the soggy, soft they soggy were soggy from. soft and oh my god my favorite <laughs> but anyways and i got to actually meet kiyoki and he's actually a really nice gentleman um and it was you know if you go down there tell him kpvm sent you and just tell him hi i'm going i'm you gonna go, to go for soggy french fries there you go <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. And that does it for this edition of News 46. I'm Glenn Evers. And I'm Monique Mitchell. And from all of us up here on the Hill at KPVM, we wish you a great night, and we hope you'll join us tomorrow. Good night. Good night.